This is a tutorial on compound interest. Before we can talk about compound interest, we need to talk about simple interest. Interest is the amount of money that we get paid if we invest a sum of money in, say, a bank account. It's also the amount of money we pay if we loan a sum of money from somebody else. Now, if we want to calculate our amount of interest or the simple interest, we can use this formula, I is equal to PRT. I is our amount of interest. P is our principal. Now this principal, this is the amount of money that we originally invest or that we originally loan. R is our interest rate. Now usually you get interest paid as a percentage of the initial investment or the initial loan. So R, this interest rate, this is usually a percentage. If we had a 5% interest rate, when we plugged in 5% into this formula, we would plug in the decimal version of 5%. We would plug in R is equal to 0 0.05 in this case. T is time, typically in years, sometimes it can be in months or days. Usually when we talk about simple interest though, T is just equal to one. So let's look at an example. Here Joseph buys a new home using an interest only loan where he pays only the interest on the value of the home each month. The home is valued at $200,000 and Joseph pays 5% interest per year on the home. So how much is his monthly interest payment? Well we're going to use our simple interest formula I is equal to PRT. In this case our principal P this is the initial value of the home loan, which is 200,000. R is our interest rate. This is 5% per year, or 0 0.05 per year. But we want to know how much his monthly interest payment is. Well, we have two options. We can either divide this 0 0.05 by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, to find out the monthly interest rate, or we can calculate the amount of interest we pay per year and then divide it by 12 to find the monthly interest payment. I'm gonna leave our interest rate as 0 0.05, or 5% per year, I'm going to say that t is equal to 1, or 1 year, and I'm going to plug all this stuff into this formula. So i is equal to 200,000 times 0 0.05 times 1. If you calculate all this out, this is equal to $10,000. Now, that means Joseph is going to pay $10,000 per year on the home. But we want to know how much his monthly interest payment is. So, assuming he pays the same amount every month, we can take this 10,000 and divide it by 12. If we do that, we'll get 833.33. So, Joseph is paying $833.33 every month for his home. Now let's look at another example. Here Anthony puts $10,000 into a savings account that pays interest every month at a rate of 1.8% per year. How much money does Anthony have after one month? And if he leaves his original investment and the first month of interest in the account, how much will he have after the second month? Well, let's deal with the first month. We're going to use our simple interest formula, I is equal to PRT. Now our principal, or our initial investment, that's $10,000. Our interest rate, R, that's 1.8% per year, or 0 0.018 per year, but we get paid interest every month. So we need to find our monthly interest rate. So I'm going to take this 0 0.018 and I'm going to divide this by 12. If I do that, I'll get 0 0.0015. This 
is my interest rate per month. Now we're only worried about the first month of the investment, so T is equal to one or one month. And if we plug all this in, I is equal to 10,000 times 0 0.0015 times one. So in the first month, Anthony is going to earn $15 in interest. How much money does he have after one month? Well, 15 plus the original 10,000 gets us $10,000 in 15, so $10,015. So now that Anthony's got $10,015, He's going to leave the 10000 and the fifteen in the account, and he's going to earn interest on all of it in the second month. So for the second month, our principal now is 10015 Our interest rate for that month doesn't change. This is still 0 0.0015. And the difference in time between month one and month two is just one, so one month. And if we plug in again, I is equal to 10,015 this time, times 0 0.0015, and then times 1. And in the second month, we're going to earn $15.02. So the total amount of money Anthony has after the second month, well, we add 10,015 to that. And we'll have 10030 and 2 cents. What's important to realize here is that in the first month, Anthony got paid $15. In the second month, he got paid $15 and 2 cents in interest. And this 2 cents comes from the fact that he got paid interest on both the $15 and the 10000 from the month before. Whenever you get interest on interest you previously earned, this is called compound interest. Imagine that we wanted to find out how much money Anthony had after 30 months. Well, we would not want to calculate the interest for month 3, and then month 4, and then month 5, and so on. That would take too long. So instead, we're going to need a compound interest formula. Our compound interest formula looks like this. Here we have A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. A is our future value, or the final amount in our account, or on our loan. P is still our principal, this is our initial investment. R is the interest rate as usual. N here is the number of times we compound in one T. So if we compound every month and time is measured in years, well then N would be 12 because there are 12 months per year. So N is the number of times we compound in one unit of time, whatever we're measuring our time in. So let's try an example. Here Matt is saving for a new car. He invests $5,000 into an account that pays 3% interest a year, and it's compounded monthly. How much will he have after 5 years? So we're going to go to our compound interest formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. We want to know how much he will have after 5 years, so we're looking for A. We know our P, P is our initial investment, which in this case is 5,000. R is our interest rate, which is 3% per year, so 0 0.03. N is the number of times we compound our interest, which is monthly, and our interest is in 3% per year, so since there are 12 months in a year, our N is 12. And we're going to invest for five years, so T, is equal to 5. If we plug all this in, A is equal to 5,000 goes in for P times 1 plus 0 0.03 over 
12 to the 12 times 5 power. So A is equal to 5,000 times 0 0.03 divided by 12. This is equal to 0 0.0025. Now if I add that to 1, I end up with 1.0025, and this is to the 12 times 5 power, or the 60th power. If you take 1.0025 and you raise it to the 60th power, this is equal to 1.1616. Multiply that by 5,000, and the amount in our account is five thousand eight hundred and eight dollars and eight cents. So this is the amount of money that Matt would have investing in an account that is compounded. Remember that means we're paying interest or receiving interest on top of the interest that we've already received. If I were to plug this into the simple interest formula, I is equal to PRT well, then I would be equal to 5,000. R would be equal to 3%, so 0 0.03, and T would be equal to 5. Solve this, and I is equal to 750. If you were to add that to the 5,000 that we originally invested, we would end up with $5,750. Notice that this is less than this because here our interest each year or each month is not being paid on the interest that we previously received. So it's always better to invest in an account that's compounded if you're investing. So now let's try using the compound interest formula a different way. Here Matt is still saving for a new car. He's still investing 5,000 and he's still investing it into an account that pays 3% interest per year and is compounded monthly. But what we want to know now is how long will it take for his investment to double. So in this problem we're looking for time. But that's okay, we're still going to use our compound interest formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Here we know what P is, P is equal to 5,000, R, that's equal to 0 0.03, N is equal to 12 because we're compounding monthly. We don't know T, that's what we're trying to solve, so we're going to need A. Now A is $10,000 because we want our investment to double. So whatever we started with, 5,000, if you double that, that's 10,000. If we plug all this in, we'll have 10,000 is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12 to the 12t power. Now this time, here we have an exponential equation with our variable t in the exponent. So if we're going to solve this, we're going to have to isolate this exponential term alone on one side. Now the first thing I'm going to do is simplify what's inside these parentheses a little bit. So we're going to have 10,000 is equal to 5,000 times, now 0 0.03 divided by 12, that's 0, 0, 0.025, so this is 1.0025 to the 12t power. Now that I've simplified this, I'm going to isolate it, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5,000. Then I'll end up with 1.0025 to the 12t power is equal to 10,000 divided by 5,000, that's 2. Now that I've isolated this, I'm going to have to take and convert this expression into a logarithm because I have to get this variable out of the exponent. If I do this, I'm going to take 
12t and make it equal to the log with a base of 1.0025 of 2. Now this is going to be difficult to take the log of, so I'm going to use the change of base formula, and I'm going to say that 12t is equal to the common log of 2 over the common log, or the log base 10, of 1.0025. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 12, so t is equal to the common log base 2 over 12 times the log of 1.0025. If you calculate this out, t is equal to 23.13. Now we're paying this interest per year, so this is in years. So being compounded monthly at a rate of 3% per year, it would take 23.3 years to double your money. Now let's look at one more example problem. Here Matt is planning to buy a car in three years. He wants to invest 5,000 now and hopes to have 6,000 to spend on the car when he buys it. So what kind of interest rate would he need if his investment is compounded monthly? Once again, we're going to use our compound interest formula. This is A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Here we know what our final amount is. A is 6,000. Our initial investment P is 5,000. And we know our time T, that's three years. And we're compounding monthly, so n is equal to 12. Plug all this in, and we end up with 6,000 is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus r is what we're looking for over 12, because n is 12, to the 12 times 3 power, because time is 3 years. So we have 6,000, and that's equal to 5,000, times 1 plus r over 12 to the 12 times 3 power or the 36th power. Now I got to get to this value of r so I'm going to divide both sides by 5,000. 6,000 divided by 5,000 is 1.2 so this is equal to 1 plus r over 12 To the 36th power, now I'm going to raise both sides of this equation to the 1 over 36th power, or the 36th root. If I do that, I'll have 1 plus r over 12 is equal to 1.2 to the 1 36th power, which is equal to 1.00508. Approximately. Subtract 1 from both sides. We'll get r over 12 is equal to 0 0.00508. Multiply both sides by 12. And we'll get r is equal to approximately 0 0.061. Or we can say 6.1%. So Matt's account has to have at least a 6.1% per year interest rate. Now the next thing we have to talk about is continuously compounded interest. This is when our interest is not compounded daily, monthly, weekly, yearly. It's always being compounded or it's continuously being compounded. And that formula looks just like the compound interest formula, instead of having 1 plus r over n as our base, we use the base e. So our formula is a is equal to p times e to the rt. a is our future value still, p is still our initial investment or our principal, r is still our interest rate, and t is still time. So again, let's look at an example. 
Lindsay invests $1,000 into an account with 4% per year continuously compounded interest. How much will she have after 10 years? And how long will it take her investment to double? Well, we have two different questions here. First, let's look at how much she will have after 10 years. A is equal to P E R T. We're looking for A after 10 years. So our future value A is equal to our principal or our initial investment of 1000, which is P times E. E is our natural constant, it's equal to about 2.718 to the power of R, so 0.044% in decimal form, times T, which is time, so 10 years. So we have A is equal to 1,000 times E. Now 0 0.04 times 10 is the 0 0.4 power e to the 0 0.4 power, that's about 1.4918. Multiply that by 1,000, and the future value would be 1,491 and about 82 cents. So if her account is continuously compounded at 4% per year, her final account balance after 10 years is $1,491.82. Now let's work on the second half of this problem. How long will it take for her investment to double? Well again, we're going to use our continuously compounded interest formula where A is equal to P to the ERT. We still have the same P, we still have the same interest rate R. And now we know A instead of T. A is our final value and our investment is supposed to double. So A is going to be equal to 2,000. So this is going to look like 2,000 is equal to 1,000 times E to the R or the 0.04 T. Now here I have an exponential equation with my variable in the exponent. So I'm going to solve this just like I would any other exponential equation. I'm going to isolate my exponential term by dividing both sides by 1,000. If I do that, I'll end up with 2 is equal to e to the 0.04t. Now to get this variable out of my exponent, I'm going to rewrite this as a logarithm expression. Now my base is e, so this is going to be a natural logarithm expression. So I'm going to say that the natural log of 2 is equal to 0.04t. Now that my variable is out of my exponent, I can solve for t. I just divide by 0.04 on both sides. And I get t is equal to the natural log of 2 over 0.04. If you calculate this out, you'll see that t is equal to approximately 17.3. Now we're paying 4% per year, so this is 17.3 years. So it takes a little bit over 17 years for Lindsay's investment to double. So now let's look at another example. Here Tony and Matt both invest $5,000 into an account that receives 3% interest annually for 10 years. Tony invests in an account that is compounded monthly. Matt invests in an account that is compounded continuously. So who made the better investment? Well first let's calculate how much money Tony's going to have. His is compounded monthly. So we're going to use the compound interest formula that looks like A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Now here for both of them P is equal to 5,000. R is equal to 0 0.03 and T is equal to 10 for 10 years. If we plug all this in, we'll have A is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03 over N. N is the amount of times that Tony's account is compounded and that's monthly, so 12 times per year. 
and that's to the 12 times t power or 12 times 10 power. So if we simplify this, this is 5,000. 0 0.03 over 12, that's 0 0.025, so 1.0025, raised to the 12 times 10 power, or the 120th power. If you raise that to that power, that's equal to 1.349. Multiply that by 5,000, and Tony's final amount would be $6,746.77. Now let's figure out how much Matt will have. This is continuously compounded, so we're going to use the formula A is equal to P-E-R-T. A is what we're looking for, that's equal to 5,000, times E to the 0 0.03 times 10 power. So A is equal to 5,000 times E to the 0 0.3 power. E to the 0 0.3 power, that's 1.3499. Multiply that by 5,000, and Matt's final amount will be $6,749.29. So who made the better investment? Well, Matt did, by about $3. Generally, the more you compound your interest, the more money you will make up. Compounding continuously is the most amount of times that you can compound your interest because you're always compounding your interest when you compound continuously. So compounding continuously is the best investment you can make. Now the last thing we're going to talk about are effective rates of return. Effective rates of return are simple interest rates that we calculate or are equivalent to rates that are compounded. Because when you compound interest, you end up with more money than you normally would if you just calculated simple interest. So let's look at an example here. If 2,500 is invested at 5% compounded monthly, what is our effective rate of return? And then let's compare that to the effective rate of return if this investment is compounded semi-annually, or twice a year. Well, first let's find out how much interest we would earn in one year if we invest this 2500 at 5% compounded monthly. So we're going to use our compound interest formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Here n is equal to 12 because we're compounding monthly, r is equal to 0 0.05, 5%, p our principal is 2500, so we have everything we need to calculate our final amount, that's equal to 2500, times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 to the 12 times 1 because we're doing this for one year, power. So A is equal to 2,500 times now 0 0.5 over 12 and then plus 1. This is equal to 1.00417 and this is raised to the 12th power. That's equal to 1.0517. Multiply that by 2,500, and our final amount is $2,627.90. So how much interest did we earn in that one year? Well, if we subtract our original amount, 
we'll see that we earned $127.90 in interest. So let's compare that to a simple interest formula. Remember, a simple interest formula looks like I is equal to PRT. Well, we earned $127.90 in interest on a principal of $2,500. We did this in one year, and we want to find our effective rate of return, or the effective interest rate that would have been a simple interest problem, not a compound interest problem. So 2,500 times R times T, but again, T is just 1. So here we have 127.90 is equal to 2,500 R. Divide both sides by 2,500. And our interest rate is 0 0.0512, or approximately 5.12%. So our effective rate of return at 5% compounded monthly is really 5.12%. Now let's calculate our effective rate of return if this investment is compounded semi-annually, or n is equal to 2. Our principal is still 2,500. Our interest rate is still 0.05. And t, we're still doing this for one year, so t is equal to 1. Plug all this in, a is equal to 2,500 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 this time, all to the 2 times 1 power. 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. Add that to 1, and this is 1.025. Raise that to the 2 times 1 power, or square it, and then multiply that by 2,500. 1 1.025 squared is approximately 1.050625. Multiply that by 2,500. And our final amount is $2,626.56. Now we need to find what our effective interest rate or our effective rate of return if this had been a simple interest problem. So I is equal to PRT. Our interest is the final amount we have minus our initial investment, which in this case our interest is $126.56. So I is $126.56. Our principal is still 2,500. Our R is what we're looking for, and T is still equal to 1. So R is equal to 2,500, dividing 126.56. If we calculate that out, we get 0 So our effective rate of return, if we're compounding semi-annually, is 5.06%. So compounding more often raises our effective rate of return. And now that we've talked about effective rates of return, that completes our tutorial on compound interest.